What's up, peers, and welcome back to the World Crypto Network here for a very nice team up of two of the most beautiful open source projects that we have here in Bitcoin the one and only cold card wallet, as well as the beautiful Electrum wallet user interface. Uh, so this is the great mashup of cold card, Mark II, and Electrum that you can, of course, connect to your own full note for complete privacy. So we will do a complete guide uh, on how you can download Electrum, how you can export your wallet, how you can export or build partially signed Bitcoin transaction, export them, sign them, broadcast them, everything in this one video. Uh, okay, so to start, we first go back to our cold card, right? We have already generated the private key, uh, the master key. We have done the backups. We have done the pins and everything, right? So the, the hardware device is secure. Now we can actually put money on there. And uh, we, for this, go into the advanced settings, which is the fourth uh, on the main venue. Uh, and we enter this. And for this, again, the fourth is the micro SD card tab. Uh, and here we have many different options. We could, for example, do a backup of the entire system and verify that backup. And we will do so in one of the next videos. We could also dump the summary, which is public information in a human readable form. So it is a TXT file uh, that will then give you all the master fingerprint, uh, the master public key, and some of the addresses uh, for all the different derivation paths, which is really nice. Might be good to have such a summary in clear text as well. You can also upgrade from the SD card, and this is what we have done in one of the previous videos, uh, so go back if you are curious about this. But then the fourth or fifth option here is the Electrum wallet, and this is actually what we want to do. Uh, so for this, we insert a little SD card uh, here in the back of the cold card and make sure that it's uh, firmly sitting in there, and we enter the Electrum wallet. And now the screen reads, this saves a skeleton Electrum wallet file onto the micro SD card. And you can then open that file in Electrum without ever connecting this cold card to a computer. Is that not awesome? That is outstanding. Uh, we can uh, export the public key and import the, all the important information into a software wallet that we control on our own hardware, open source software connected to our own full node. Uh, and then without ever connecting with a USB cable, the hardware wallet to the connected internet connected laptop, we can do all the communication. Very, very awesome. So choose a address type for the wallet on the next screen. Legacy, wrapped SegWit, native SegWit. And you, the file created is sensitive in the terms of privacy but it should not compromise your funds directly. So of course, if someone knows your extended public key, they know all of your transactions, all of your coins in the past, in the future. That is not good. So keep your extended public key to yourself and therefore do not run SPV wallets, right? For example, if you use Electrum on the regular SPV standard mode, then you send 20 of your addresses to a random server that might be malicious, might be spying on you, that might get hacked in the future right? Uh, so this is not good for privacy. Run your own full node. And that's the first privacy rule. So when we now press OK, uh, it, it goes, uh, oh yeah, we can then select between legacy, pay to public key hash, uh, pay to script hash, SegWit, and native SegWit, because we want to have the most benefits out of our Bitcoin experience. We, of course, use the most up-to-date and recent uh, signature format, which is native segregated witness. So we get 70% uh, cheaper fees. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, okay, so now it says generating, uh, and it flashes here on the side, uh, which indicates that a read-write action has happened from the SD card. So the Electrum wallet file written is called new-wallet.json. Uh, very nice. Uh, we can now press OK and export or click out here uh, our SD card again, put this back into our SD card reader, uh, and plug this back into our computer. So, uh, okay, now that that is in, let's go back into the screen share and actually go through the setup uh, of setting up the Electrum wallet. Uh, so for this, go to electrum.org uh, slash down or hashtag download. Make sure it's SSL encrypted, of course. And here you can get the most recent version, which is 3.3.4. You can on Linux, of course, download the app image, uh, which well, I've already done, and click on the signature, uh, which gives you right here the signature done by the private key of uh, Thomas Fickle. And you can also get Thomas's public key right here. Uh, of course, do not trust any random website with the public key. Actually verify on different sources if this is correct. And of course, also ask Thomas Ferklin in person. 
So now let's get actually into this. Uh, we have right here uh, the, uh, well, the file that we want to verify, right? Uh, GPG dash dash verify of the Electrum app image and the signature part, ASC, right? And we do this and we will see the signature was made on the 13th of February, 2019 with this RSA key. So right, if you recognize this fingerprint to be correctly corresponding to Thomas Fricklin, then we are good. Um, this key is not certified with a trusted signature, which means that in my local web of trust, I do not have a peer who has signed Thomas's key, uh, which is not too good, right? We should actually build our web of trust. Very important to do this. There's also no indication that the signature belongs to the owner, right? I have not verified that this fingerprint is actually the one of Thomas Fücklin, and I will do so as soon as I meet him well, in Meetspace. So now what we do next is that we have to make this uh, app image, which we now know it has a valid signature, right? We have to make this executable. We do this by cjmod a plus x and then the file. Uh, this is a, a quite easy command and awesome already done. And so now what we have to do now is we have to copy from the SD card, which is for me at media, my user, uh, and this SD card number right here, and then the file newwallet.json. And we want to copy that into the dot electrum slash testnet slash wallets repository. Okay, here is where all your extended public keys for the different electrum wallets are. And we want to copy our wallet from the SD card onto this repository. And when we do so, done already. And now what we can start is from the local, uh, yeah, from the local folder, which is here my programs folder, we can start the app image of Electrum in the testnet flag. Uh, by the way, as I'm not running a testnet full node, I actually use the Electrum SPV server here, which is not good. Okay, so if you do this on mainnet, actually specify that you connect to your own Electrum personal server. So now when we start this magic uh, little Electrum uh, wallet, uh, we then here see that it already selects the new wallet.json. Uh, and we could also choose here in our .electrum slash testnet slash wallets all the different wallet files that we want. But of course, we want to check out the new wallet.json, which by the way, you can at any time rename for your own convenience. Okay, as soon as we press next, we are in the Electrum user interface. Very nice. And we get a direct warning, uh, which is uh, interesting, of course. But what does this actually say? Please insert your cold card uh, with the fingerprint of this right here. Verify that the cable is connected and that no other application is using it. Uh, should we try to connect again? Well, no, you should not, because it is impossible for the Electrum software client right here to ever reach the cold card. Why? Because the cold card is never plugged in via USB. We only, always and only communicate over the SD cards, uh, which again is a feature, not a bug. Uh, so do not uh, connect again or try to connect again. So, and here we have all the beauties of the Electrum GUI interface. Uh, one pro tip, in view, you can show addresses and show coins. And the coins is actually what is really important because these are your unspent transaction outputs. Uh, very nice to have that. I actually I made the mistake here of reusing addresses, which you should never do, but well, it's testnet. <laughs> so in order to build a transaction, let's just send a fake transaction uh, to myself here. Uh, so let's generate a new address. And here is the address that we want to select to, of course, a BEC32 address, uh, as this is a BEC32 only wallet. Now, we can go into coins and specify that we want to, for example, spend this UTXO. And we want to pay to this specific address here. In the description now, we can say uh, cold card plus Electrum equals awesome. Uh, which, well, of course, is true. And we have a total of almost 100,000, uh, 1 million Satoshis at our disposal, minus mining fees. Uh, so I would like uh, to spend not all of this, but let's say uh, 500,000 Satoshis, right? That is always a good. Uh, and this will be then in total a transaction of 141 bytes, which at a one Satoshi per byte level equals a total of almost nothing in transaction fees. How ridiculous. If we would send now, then the, the software would try to connect directly to the cold card, but of course that is impossible. So instead we click on preview. And here we see the transaction ID with the description uh, that it is cold card plus electrum equals awesome. The status of it being unsigned, which is true and correct, 
because well, this is unsigned, and the amount being sent to an external address, which in this case is zero, because we sent back to ourselves. We, we see the size and the fee of the transaction and the end lock time, which is for regular use just a, a recently found uh, Bitcoin block height. Uh, we have one input, which is from this transaction, this outpoint um, with this address of 1 million uh, Satoshis in value. And we see that there are two outputs being created. One is the amount that we want to send to our own uh, internal wallet. And one is the change output that goes on a special deviation path. Now we could sign it if we have the hardware wallet connected directly, which of course we do not. So, uh, or we could here copy, show the QR code or export a Electrum specific communication of unsigned transaction, which is not the standard partially signed Bitcoin transaction, which is the preferable format. Uh, but of course, the Electrum uh, communication is much older uh, and PSPT is a newer, more advanced standard. So we can save the PSPT uh, file right here, new-wallet.json, and then dash the identifier of this transaction, 1905-09-1523, a dot partially signed Bitcoin transaction. Very nice. Now we can save this entire fund and the transaction has successfully been exported to our uh, SD card, which is really, really nice. Uh, so we can close this for now and I can stop sharing the screen uh, to now show you on the SD card, right? We have just exported the PSPT file uh, and we can now put our SD card back into the cold card. Uh, oh, this is so cool. I mean, seriously, sne sneaker net communication. And on the main menu, uh, the very first option here is read the uh, or ready to sign. That is what we are now, right? And it will read uh, from the SD card directly, automatically, which unsigned, partially signed Bitcoin transaction is on here. And it asks now, is it okay to sign 0 0.005 testnet Bitcoin to the address TB1Q79 and so on? Uh, so we actually see that we see on one screen the amount and to the address of the full back 32 address. Uh, so very nice that you see everything at once without something weird scrolling through. Uh, so that is very, very nice. And uh, further below, it also says that we will have network fees of 141 Satoshis and that we can press OK uh, to approve and sign the transaction X or the transaction and we could uh, press X if we want to abort. Well, of course, we want to say yes, uh, which will then do a signing job and it will tell us right here with a blinking that a read write action has happened on the SD card. And now it says the PSBT is signed. The updated PSPT is newwallet.json-190509-1523 signed.psbt, but that is only an updated PSPT. We can actually already have a finalized transaction, which is ready for broadcast, which is then the newwallet.json-190509-1523 uh, final.txn as the transaction format for the final version. Uh, perfect, we can exit out of this uh, and remove the SD card right here, uh, plug it back into our uh, SD card reader and back into the laptop, which it's always a pain, somewhat the, the placement, somewhat odd. Uh, and okay, back into sharing screen. Now, uh, what we have here, uh, for example, let me, let me jump back now here into a new terminal uh, to then uh, go into this directory. So what we have here are a couple different files. We have the new wallet.json, right? That is the extended public key export format in the Electrum wallet uh, format. Then we have this transaction, partially signed Bitcoin transaction. We have for this transaction a signed partially Bitcoin transaction, right? So this is unsigned, this is signed. And we have a final dot transaction file, which contains all the information that we need in order to broadcast uh, that transaction. So how do we actually go about doing this? In the Electrum interface, we go on to Tools, Load Transaction. And here we could load from the blockchain, from a QR code, from a, from a text file, or actually from a file itself. And since the PSPT here is filed, uh, we click on this. It will automatically jump into our SD card slot and it will automatically find the, uh, the most recent signed final transaction. And now we can open this, which will give us here this confirmation field. 
we see the same transaction ID and we see now that the status is signed with all the same information before. Uh, so how much we are actually sending outside and what inputs and outputs are uh, included at what fee. Uh, this is very nice. You see, we cannot even select sign here because it is already signed, uh, which is nice. But we could still copy and uh, show QR code and export that and all the good stuff. So, but now the magic happens right here where we actually broadcast the signed transaction to the public Bitcoin network and it's done. The payment is sent and that is how easy it was. And we already see here a new transaction has been received in Electrum, which is the change and the destination. So if we go here on the history, we see a unconfirmed transaction uh, where we sent external to our wallet just 141 Satoshis for transaction fees. Uh, but we see here with the coins, we have two new unconfirmed transactions, which is here the destination amount that we picked and right here a change address that we also picked as, or that was automatically uh, deducted. And Piers, that is it. That is the entire process of exporting the public key uh, in the Electrum standard file uh, from the cold card over SD card to then verify the signatures of the Electrum app image, uh, making the app image executable uh, and copying the wallet file into the Electrum testnet wallets for repository, starting Electrum in the testnet and then uh, building and exporting a partially signed Bitcoin transaction, signing it itself on the cold card device and exporting that uh, signed partially signed Bitcoin transaction file uh, over to the software again and broadcasting it from here. Your private key device has never ever at once touched a internet infected computer. This is complete offline storage uh, of Bitcoin. Unbelievable, it really is unbelievable. Uh, this is beautiful, beautiful tools that you can use uh, if you so choose. So, Pierce, uh, the regular shilling. If you like uh, hear these videos in depth about Electrum, about cold cart, and all about all the other stuff, and if you have a specific question, you can call the HODL hotline uh, to schedule a call with one of the many uh, peers who are teachers here on this platform, uh, including me here, who I uh, will be talking a bit, uh, if you would like, so about, for example, the cold card wallet uh, or GPG or some other stuff. And for a humble donation of 1.5 million sets, uh, you can get an hour-long conversation where you can answer uh, and ask and hopefully get an answer of all the many questions that you have. Also, if you would like to support the many events that we cover on the road, you can do so by donating uh, to the Telecon right here uh, for a new microphone uh, to give you the very good sound quality, not just right here in the studio, but actually also back uh, here on different road uh, shows that we have at Bitcoin Family Gatherings. So, Piers, thank you very much for your support of the World Crypto Network. And as a token of gratitude, we have partnered up with the team at ColdCard to give you the chance of winning one of 10 free giveaway cold cards. But there are some limitations on who can enter the lottery. And first and foremost, you have to be an open source entrepreneur. If you have... Uh, uh, contributed to one of the many open source projects available and then let us know how, why you need the cold card wallet and what you would do with it and then with some good luck you can actually get your hands on them clicky buttons and use it with your own Electrum personal server. Pierce as always thank you very much for joining me here today and see you on the next show. Bye bye.